start the meditation every evening with thoughts of goodwill. And when you do it systematically, they teach you to start first with thoughts of goodwill for yourself, thoughts of goodwill for people who are close to your heart, and then work out gradually in ever widening circles. People you like, people you're neutral about, and then even people you don't like. And in some way it may sound Pollyannish to think that, well, even the people I hate, people who've been unfair, people who've been unjust and cruel, it just sounds a bit too syrupy to say, okay, may they be happy. But think about what kind of happiness you're wishing for, true happiness, happiness that comes from within. If they had that kind of happiness, they wouldn't be cruel and unjust. So it's not just a syrupy, pleasant thought, but it's actually a, a radical way of thinking how the problems of the world might be solved, if everybody could look within. learning how to think outside of the box. You read day after day in the newspapers about this political party, that political party, say, well, they've treated us unfair, so next time around we're going to be unfair to them. Well, nothing gets accomplished that way, and there's no way you can ever expect them to like each other and patch up their differences. That's the way the world is. Look at our own families. There are issues within our families that may never get patched up. There's everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people have long lists of grievances they carry around. And those things are never going to get resolved. As the Taijans are constantly saying, the work of the world never gets finished. The issues of the world never get resolved. One side seems to win, and all of a sudden its winning just gets too oppressive to other people, and so they've got to fight back one way or another. So when you think about the way the world is, realize that Things in the world are never going to get done. They're never going to get settled. So we can't wait for the world's issues to be settled. We can't even wait for the issues in our own lives to be settled before we start looking for peace, because peace is the way out, peace within the mind, a happiness that comes from within. So if you find yourself entangled with a lot of issues in daily life, remember that they're never going to get settled. There's never going to be a final resolution. People die, but that's not the end of the issue. They come back again. Old issues get reformulated and they get revived. So you have to try to learn to think in this way to help disentangle yourself from those issues so the mind can settle down. For one of two reasons, either through the realization that those things are never going to get settled or to the extent which things can be improved outside, they have to come from a clear mind, a mind that's not operating under the, the cloud of delusion and the cloud of ignorance, or just the simple inability to think straight, think things through. So the solution to the problem is to settle the mind down. Think in this way if you're having trouble getting the mind to stay with the breath. John Mahabua once compared meditators to two types of trees. One type of tree is standing alone out in the middle of the field. If you want to cut it down, it's easy. You just go out and you cut it. And you figure out which direction you want it to fall, there's no big difficulty. That stands for the type of people who sit down, focus on the breath, the mind is willing to settle down and stay with the breath. No problem at all, because it doesn't have a lot of entanglements in the world. The other type of tree is a tree in the middle of a forest where its branches are entangled with branches of other trees around it. If you want to cut that one down, you've got to use a lot of strategy. Learn how to cut this branch, cut that branch, disentangle things before you can then bring the tree down in the direction you want. So if you find that you're that second kind of tree, you, know, you focus on the breath and the mind is not willing to settle down, well look and see where your branches are entangled what you can do to cut them. Learn how to think in ways that make it easier to disentangle yourself. <laughs> I once heard someone set up a problem. They said, suppose that you're dreaming, and in this dream you're in a boat, and a pirate comes along. And in the boat there's your mother, in the boat there's your child, and a lot of other people that you really feel that you love a lot. And the pirate comes along and demands somebody. Is going to take one life. 
of the boat, what do you do? And he said, as he tells his problem to adults, they think about their mothers and they think about their children and weighing things, also think about sacrificing themselves, but then realizing the kid would be up, you know, would suffer if they did. But he said, if you tell that story to children, pose this problem to children, the kids will say, well, wake up. After all, it's just a dream, right? And so look in your life to see which, which problems are like that, which are the you get into a situation and you lose your perspective on it. You lose your perspective on the alternatives that are available to you. You're trying to solve the problem, even though it's a problem in a dream. That's one kind of problem in life. The other kinds of problems in life, the real ones, those are the ones that are going to require really clear thinking. And if you find you can't get anywhere with them, well, look at look at what the real issue is. It's not so much the problem is intractable, it's just your tools for cutting through the problem have gotten dull. Your mindfulness, your alertness, your concentration, your discernment, these things have gotten dull. You've got to sharpen them. So you put the problem aside for the time being and say, I'll get back to that when my tools are sharper. So either way, whether it's one of those imaginary problems, or it's a dream problem, or it's a real problem. Something that really does have to be solved, something that can be solved. You have ways of thinking yourself out of the entanglement, so you can get the mind to settle down. We often forget that our mental tools are just that. They're tools, and they have to be cared for. And sometimes the situation they show us is not the real situation because they're dull. They've been overused. You haven't taken proper care of them. And so when you look at a problem, you don't really see the problem for what it is. That's why you can't see through it. So you leave the problem as it is, even though it's unfinished and unsettled, and you turn and take care of your tools. And this is a lesson that every craftsman should know. You're working on some wood and, the, and your saw hasn't been sharpened properly. So even though the job requires, may, there may be a deadline for the job, it's got to get done, you've got to stop and sharpen your saw, however much time it's going to take. Then you can get back and you find that you can do the job a lot better. So even though it may seem like you're wasting your time or you're running away from the problem, you're not. You're simply putting yourself in a better position to deal with the problem and to see the problem for what it is. As I said, many times you come back to it and you realize it was a dream problem. Or one of those problems where you've put up parameters around the problem that make it impossible for you to solve it. Like those brain teasers they put in the newspapers. They set up conditions, and if you accept the conditions, then you've got to realize, okay, where have they not placed conditions on it so you can you have your room to maneuver. And you oftentimes realize that your inability to solve those problems is that you've carried a few other conditions along that have not been placed on it. So the best way to see that is to step out of the problem for a while. Sharpen your tools and then come back in. These are just a handful of ways of thinking about the problems we face in life, the issues, the unsettled issues we have. You've got to learn how to disentangle yourself, even if only temporarily, if you're going to get the mind in the proper place, get it in proper shape. With the realization that some problems just simply can't be settled. If you're going to wait till everything gets it settled and then go for awakening, you're never going to get there. When the Buddha left home, he left a lot of issues. When he came back, he was able to straighten everything else out, not by working on those issues directly, but by having each person in his family focus on his or her own mind. Almost the entire family became arahants. Whatever issues they had before just became non-issues. But then there are people who go off and they, they can't train their family. There's a story of Ratapala. He leaves home much against his parents' wishes goes off, becomes an arahant, comes back, wants to teach them, but they just are too unwilling to take the teaching. So he just drops the whole issue. 
realizing that there are some problems that just will never get settled. And as the Buddha said, winning out over yourself is much better than winning out over thousands of other people, because when you win out over the thousands, it's, it's never resolved. You kill them off while well, they come back as, as your, get reborn as your children. Then you've got a real problem. Or if they don't get killed off, they're going to plot revenge. They'll plot their return. Victory in war, victory outside, victory over other people, even if it's not more just sort of day to day, back and forth, never resolves anything. Issues get settled in court. And they may seem to be the most just and fair issue. Well, there will always be somebody who feels that they were mistreated, and they'll find some way to get back. This is just the way of the world. Nothing gets settled, really. And you realize the only way to realize that is to, to resolve the issue for yourself, at least, is to realize that some issue you've just got to get out of. And this is your way out, through training the mind. There's that poem where the Buddha talks about looking at the world and seeing just nothing but conflict, people struggling over things where there's never enough for anybody. Compared it to fish in a pond that's drying up. After a while, there's not enough water for all the fish, and so they struggle and struggle and struggle. Of course, make things worse. He said, that's the way the world is. It gave rise to a real sense of dismay, a real sense of confinement. But then he looked inside and he realized, well, the problem is not out there. It's the problem is this arrow we have in our hearts, this arrow of craving. Because we always want things to be better than they are, more permanent, more lasting. The things that we like, we want them to be more lasting. As for the things we don't like, we want them to be annihilated. And that craving is the problem. It's what creates all our issues in life our participation in those issues. Once you deal with the craving, then that puts you, takes you out of the issue entirely. So you're no longer involved in that constant back and forth, that unending back and forth. And it's important always to realize we have the choice to, to get out. In fact, we actually chose to get involved to begin with. And if you try to trace it back back to the beginning point, you'll probably never find it. But well, you will find it in the habits of the mind. This is one of the interesting points about the Buddha's teachings. He doesn't ever talk about a first cause, the beginning of things, like most other religions. And it's where you're going to find that first cause. If there was a first cause in time, well, that's happened a long time ago. But he realized that the pattern of reality is something that's constantly repeated over and over again. There's some element of creation with every moment. So you focus on that. Look at the habits of your mind, the choices you're making right here, right now. And you see that that particular pattern is, is the problem. And it's right there for you to look at, to analyze, and to solve right here. This is one of the few things that can get solved, the issue of craving in the mind. The craving that's based on ignorance. The ignorance can be ended. And what is it ignorant of? It's ignorant of what, what really is stress and suffering. What's causing it? What the end of stress and suffering is, and how to, what qualities to develop to get out, to put an end to suffering. So we focus on that. You know, what, it, what are you doing right now that's creating a burden for the mind? You're making choices that are burdening the mind totally unnecessarily. So get the mind quiet to see if you can see that happening. Until you see it happening, it's, it sounds pretty abstract. But you can actually begin to see the movements of the mind. That's when you begin to see, okay, when the mind does this, it's, it hurts. The mind does this, it's harmful, and I don't have to do that. It doesn't have to act that way. It doesn't have to think in those ways. This is where you resolve the issue. When you end this ignorance, all the other causal factors that lead to clinging and craving and, and suffering, 
all fall, fall down like a whole line of dominoes. So this is where the problem is. And it's up to us to take responsibility for it right here, right now. If we don't, well, who's going to suffer? We're going to suffer. The Buddha doesn't force anybody to practice. But he simply says, if you want to resolve the issues in your life, this is how they get resolved. This is what you have to do. And it's up to you to choose. Am, am I going to finally take the way out, or do I want to go back and settle a few old scores before I go? The choice is ours. And we're making that choice over and over and over again. If you see that the desire to settle scores is dominant in your mind, well, you can always choose to change. It's one of the good things about the path. You're never committing yourself forever to something. You can always say, I'm out of here. <laughs> and it's not an act of irresponsibility. You're taking your contribution to the troubles of the world and you're taking it out. That's a choice that each person has to make for him or herself alone. Because we're the ones who choose to be involved, so we're the ones who have to make that choice finally say, okay, I'm out of that particular problem, I'm out of that particular unending back and forth. I want to focus on the real problems, the real causes of suffering, stress, and life. It'd be nice if we could do this for everybody else in our life, but we can't. Each of us has to do this for him or herself alone. And the best way to encourage other people to do it is for you to do it yourself. That way they can see it's possible. As the Buddha once said, having the Buddha as our noble friend, as our admirable friend, is what makes it entirely possible for us to find the way to the end of suffering, because we've got an example. Without that example, everybody stays within the parameters of the problems or the issues as everybody else around us defines them. And within those parameters, nothing ever gets resolved. The Buddha thought outside of the box, he acted outside of the box, and now he's an example for all the rest of us to get out of the box too.